I love the prophet who struggled so hard When his mission was just a start He held the hands of each companion Unshamed to play with little children With little children I love the prophet who struggled so hard I love the prophet who struggled so hard Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another episode in our program How He Treated Them. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabihi wa mustafa wa ba'd. My dear viewers, today inshallah we'll get to speak about how did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam treat women. And this is indeed a very sensitive topic, especially when everywhere we go, a lot of people raise questions about the position of women in Islam. And there is a lot of myth in this respect. So today, inshallah, we're going to lift the fog and explain to the viewers and share with you how much women have been appreciated and granted rights in Islam more than any other time before or even of our current time. In order to do that, I would like to welcome our guest, Sheikh Ibrahim, Sheikh Muhammad Saeed, and uh, Wasim, Sheikh Sheikh Wasim. Thank you all for joining us, and without any further ado, I remember in Surah An-Nahl, chapter number 16, correct? In uh, ayah number 97, the Almighty Allah says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبَةً وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ I'm going to ask Sheikh Ibrahim to comment on the meaning of this ayah and explaining how much Islam appreciated women. And according to this ayah, uh, Islam does not make any distinction in respect of doing good deeds, being uh, um, responsible worshippers and citizens uh, between a man and a woman. The ayah makes it very clear that there is no distinction between them in this respect. Bismillah. The ayah, as it clearly states, whoever do righteous good deeds, mm. the two conditions for these deeds to be righteous, it has to be with the foundation of Al-Iman faith. Mm. And it's a righteous deed according to the way of the Prophet mm. So whether it's a male or female, mm. everybody in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the same. He's the creator of all. And this issue actually was never an issue among the Muslims. It's but has Elsewhere. it been ever like that before Islam and before Prophet Muhammad? Sallallahu before Sallallahu. it was always the rule of those who are more physically powerful. Mm. And that's why women have been oppressed and, and, and abused mm. throughout centuries the, in the humankind. This is how they are unless they would be under the rule of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. that bring justice and mercy and so on. Mm. Uh, and the rights of women, which is the subject that is always talked about, it's not necessarily what people think in one ear or the other, mm -hmm. but it's rather by what the creator of the heavens and the earth, he's the one that knows best how women and men would function. And that's why this verse, when it comes to the purpose of life, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and the outcome after this life is to enter Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everybody has the equal opportunity to be among the, uh, the ones that are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a crystal clear reference in the Quran that indicates that whether a man or a woman before Allah the Almighty and in the sight of Allah they are equal, yes. correct? Yes. Um, Sheikh Muhammad, but I understand and we all understand that in other religions that women have been looked at down and uh, they would consider not just inferior some religions and religious books perceive women as uh, the source of the original sin uh, and, and Eve, Hawa, peace be upon her as the one who is totally responsible for uh, kicking us and Adam out of heaven and for the misery that we're experiencing what would you like to say about that? I think before the advent of Islam a woman has actually been mistreated uh, on the religious level and also on the cultural level. Yeah. 
basically, if we look at the other religions, as you mentioned, uh, Eve is the source of the original sin. Mm. So she is, uh, she is responsible for uh, the basic sin which caused Adam to be driven from the uh, heavens. Mm. And consequently, most of the legislations which resulted from this uh, were basically based on mistreating women. Yeah, but and like putting what the Quran said, فَأَكَلَ Exactly. The Quran actually uh, took the, the original sin, refuted the original sin in two ways. Number mm -hmm. one, no soul can actually bear the responsibility of other soul's sin. لا تزر وزر أخرى. Number two, both of them were actually responsible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he told them how to repent and return back to him, he told both of them, Adam and Eve. Every ayah in the Quran, every verse in the Quran tackled this subject was mentioned in the dual format. فأكل exactly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized the mutual responsibility of both men and women. Mm -hmm. If we look at the other religions, uh, the old Indian religions, mm -hmm. how they looked at women, they uh, looked at her that she is a source of evil. Mm -hmm. Even the Arabs in the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, they inherited some of those cultures. And you can read it from all the legislation in Islam. Mm -hmm. And most of the uh, basic, uh, m most of these legislations which address women, you will find that Islam made a change mm -hmm. in those legislations. Tremendous change. Tremendous changes. Like for, for example, they, they treated her that she is a source of uh, dishonoring her family mm -hmm. and tribe. That's why uh, they used actually to kill, kill her. Uh, to bury her to bury alive. Her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we talk about the waiting period, for example, in the Islamic uh, law. Mm -hmm. And we know that when a person dies, his widow is supposed to wait for four months and ten days. No. And before that, there is another ayah, which it says that it's only its full year, full one year. It used to be before. Exactly. Full year. But, but nobody actually read about the background of it. Yeah. How a woman, number one, was actually badly inherited in the, the pre-Islamic period of Jahiliyyah. Mm -hmm. She was, in her, when a man dies, his son inherits his father's widow. And number two, you, she has... You mean his stepmother? His stepmother. Not his e real Exactly, no. for sure. And, and if she... Uh, so if she become his. Exactly. Like, she becomes like immediate. a property. Yeah. And she is deprived of the right of inheritance. Mm. And when, if she is not, if she is not transferred immediately to her stepson, mm. uh, she has to wait for a very long period. One year. Having more than one year mm. in a tent mm. until she is pro she is prohibited to uh, have a shower, a shower to to take anything until she, she becomes stinks. something abandoned completely mm. so the uh, islam made a change horrible. a drastic horrible a change yes, horrible. in all, all yes, spheres horrible. exactly so uh, alhamdulillah shukla for the blessing of islam and for enjoying this divine constitution which secured uh, for women all the rights and treated them like uh, men exactly, no difference whatsoever. Sheikh Wasim, to make this drastic change in a society and in a time or an era where it was a norm, women were perceived as inferior, deprived from the least rights, and then the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, reveal to them what Allah the Almighty said in this regard and he ordered them and commanded them to give them the kind treatment, give them share of the inheritance, etc, etc. And then I remember in his farewell speech, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, during Hajjatul Wada', he made a very important remark. He kept on saying, Ala wastawsu bin nisa'i khayra. I want you to explain to us what it means and what is the significance of that in a speech where there was over 124,000 audience attending. Uh, Bismillah. So <coughs> the final sermon of the Prophet ﷺ in the only Hajj that he ﷺ performed mm. is a sermon which is one of the most comprehensive uh, sermons that the Prophet ﷺ gave in so his life, mm. bearing in mind that he ﷺ, he knew that, that he would you know, leave this worldly life. Uh, not too long after and therefore the advice to be parted with the majority of the Muslims at the time was was so important 
And I know we're talking about something that occurred you know, more than 1400 years ago, mm. i.e. that Islam honored the woman, the verses in the Quran honors the woman, the rights that are given to women from the Sunnah of the Prophet At times, you know, when we mention this now, you know, the 21st century, mm. that people may think that this is a little, they can't attach themselves to that. But then it gives me an example that, you know, when so many people try to uh, say, you know, bad things about Islam, uh, it reminds me of a person who's looking at your home and his own house is on fire and sees the reflection of the fire, doesn't realize that the reflection of the fire that appears to be on that individual, his neighbor's home, when actually, mm -hmm. in actual fact, his own home is burning down. And in many societies around the world, women are still fighting for basic rights. Mm. Things like they have to set up you know, small organizations, we want similar pay, we want similar opportunities. Even and today? Even to this day now. In the West? In the West, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. So SubhanAllah, the, and this discussion really is, is a very deep and a very important yeah. I think, discussion because mm -hmm. it is, uh, us for Muslims, we shouldn't feel as though we need to defend ourselves with regards to it's what Islam to has given to us. to others whom exactly. we are. Not only we, we defend, at times very important, but at the same time is to make clear the proponent who's talking to you from what standpoint, what moral standpoint, what ethics, or what, where do you come from in this? You're talking about a society where 150 or 200 years ago you were, your churches were discussing, does a woman have a soul? Yeah. SubhanAllah. Or so is, is she even a devil? Is she, is she, well, if she doesn't have a, a soul, then uh, she is uh, to be understood as a devil, you're right. So, Islamically, alhamdulillah, Allah Taala gave us so many, gave the woman so many things which mm. elevates her status. You know, the Prophet Ali, well, I'm sure we'll talk about this later, about the status of the mother over the father and the inheritance, the special inheritance that's given to the woman. We should feel honored, alhamdulillah, proud. All Muslim women should feel free that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one mm. who gave them these rights and that women or anyone else is not waiting on the decision of any human being to give them something. So it was the greatest man ever walked the earth, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu who communicated the message of the Almighty Allah to people who are living in the Bedouins with no civilization or almost a little bit of civilization. And he made them leaders beginning with stating that uh, the fact that men and women are alike. And there is a hadith here, Sheikh Ibrahim, it's a sound hadith narrated by the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha, in which she quoted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as saying, Inna man nisa'u shaqa'iqu rijal. I feel like I love this hadith. And I have a problem with people who, they judge Islam because of the behavior of some Muslims. We keep saying, we as Muslims would like to make distinction between what is religious and what is cultural. There is nothing in Islam called the honor killing, right? There is nothing in Islam called that you force your daughter or the girl who's under your guardianship to marry somebody whom she does not like, and so on. So in the light of this fascinating hadith, rijal, would you like to share with us in this regard? As we know that in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, it is not just a statement that shows that women are, you know, they are like them and they are, uh, even the word, maybe you guys can help me out with the, what's, what's a beautiful word for shaqa'iq? It's like a, a complementary counterpart. Right. Yeah, counterparts. Uh, they go work together. It right. actually has several meanings. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it, it, it could mean equivalent mm. and it could mean Shaqa'iq, mushtaq, from, like, mm. you know, they're all having the same origin, right. okay? Derivative. Driven from, uh, and this is how uh, Hawa, she's right. created from Adam's rib. So this is a piece of you, this is a part of you. No one says to uh, one hand, you're inferior to the left leg or uh, the right eye to the left right. eye, you know. The whole body is alike. Right. Or and the uh, other half, shaq. And, is no. the and, other and, and because of that meaning, people when they think of women, they think that they want them to be a mirror image of the men, especially when it comes to the outside world. Yeah. We're sitting here in a, such a setting, 
and there are so many people behind the scene, nobody sees them. Yeah. But if they're not present, we won't, we won't be sitting here talking. Absolutely. And the same thing when you have a family and the husband is out there, he's the one that is facing the world and he has a household and the wife is playing an more important or as, if, as important as the, as the role of the man. Mm -hmm. And people don't recognize mm -hmm. that as <coughs> anything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. He created us to worship him and to establish this deen. And the, the basic unit of any society is that unit of the family. And this word shaqa'iq, that means they're not necessarily having to compete with each other to do the same thing. Otherwise, uh, people will be lost in this world. Yeah. So there are certain duties, not everything. That's why the verse about the righteous good deeds, they all have to believe, they all have to pray, they all have to make dua, read Quran, and do righteous good deeds, charity, all of the things. Let's say if a man donated 10 bucks yeah. and a woman donated 10 bucks, right. is there anywhere in Islam that her donation is inferior as far as reward the donation of a man? Of course not. But even more than that, if a man gives his, his wife um, money, for example, mm. and she gives charity from that money, it's not her money, it's her husband's money, she gets the reward of charity, he gets the reward of charity. Wow. And this is the beauty of it. And that's, that's again, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to the good deeds, everybody's the same. Yeah. But then it's the issue of the deficiencies and the weaknesses of the human beings because of their own uh, ignorance that they might sometimes judge things based on their desires, mm -hmm. not based on the, the beautiful goals of the deen and the objectives of it. Before we take a break, Sheikh Ibrahim, uh, I know, mashallah, you recite the Quran with a melodious voice. Uh, so there is a very interesting incident mm -hmm. where Umm Umara al-Ansariya, may Allah be pleased with her, once said to the Prophet sallam, that everything in the Quran, masculine, 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 don't we get any mention in the Quran? And obviously in the Arabic language, masculine covers both. So if there are, you know, 100 women sitting and one man, then we're going to use a masculine, uh, you know, sense of form. It would be hum, not hunna. So when Allah says, Ya ayyuhan ladina amanu, it covers both of you believe men and women. But guess what? She says to the Prophet Sallallahu how come that Allah does not mention women specifically? <laughs> so Allah the Almighty responds to a woman, Umm Umar al-Ansariya, and he sends Jibreel alayhi salam with a revelation, a beautiful ayah 35 of Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter number 33, inna al-Muslimin wa muslimat I want to hear the ayah from you, then after the break, inshallah, we'll explain what it means. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما Indeed, that was beautiful, but inshallah, after the break, we'll get to learn the meaning as we have learned the reason behind its revelation. Couple minutes, brothers and sisters, and inshallah, we'll be back. Hang on, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Before the break, we enjoyed listening to the beautiful recitation of Sheikh Ibrahim to ayah number uh, 35 of Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter number 33. And now I want to know the meaning of this ayah and why did Allah the Almighty say inna al-muslimina wal-muslimati wal-mu'minina wal-mu'minati wal-qanitina wal-qanitat. Please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As it has been reported that Umm Salama came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or according to another virgin, it is Umm Umar no. who noticed that uh, in the whole message of the Quran, only, women, uh, only, only men are mentioned. 
Uh, so she came to the Prophet ﷺ. We don't have any type of address special for women. Mm. So the Prophet ﷺ recited this ayah on the pulpit, on the mimbar, in front mm. of everybody. Mm. Which uh, actually, uh, and it has a connection or relationship to the other ayat in Surah Al-Ahzab. Mm. Because uh, the previous ayat were talking about the merit of the Prophet's wives. No. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala double and multiply the rewards no. and also in case they the uh, commit a mistake, the error is double also the punishment. <laughs> double. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, just uh, explained for the ummah that also the other women they have share in these rewards. Mm. Uh, in this ayah subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a couple of deeds mm. to make it comprehensive. So it's talking about the acts of belief uh, the uh, those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala men and women uh, those who believe in Allah men and women those who are devoted to Allah men and women those who are patient uh, those who are fasting. truthful mm -hmm. those who are fasting men and women so in e each term Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the masculine and the feminine uh, uh, form or agreement in this ayah. even though had he said in al mu'minina wal muslimina etc it would have been sufficient exactly the language bears it but it has been emphasized in this ayah specifically to emphasize the importance of women yeah. i had two notes actually about this ayah and the ayah that we recited at the beginning of the episode of surah al nahl yeah. you see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing on the positive side of both men and women mm -hmm. so when he declared equality between the two genders men and women Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the righteous deeds. Mm -hmm. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comprehensively talking about all aspects of righteous deeds and qualifiers and for devotions. success. devotions. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and number two, uh, here this ayah emphasizes a very important principle in Islam, mm -hmm. which is, yes, men and women, they are equal. They are mm -hmm. not identical. And there is a difference between equality and identicality. Mm -hmm. In the sense, each one of them has his own different job and his own qualifications which have been embedded in his character and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created men and women each one of them to complement and to cooperate mm. and to integrate mm -hmm. but at the same time they are not identical and this is I think the concept that has been mentioned throughout the ayat and also through the Prophet's treatment Jazakallahu mm. khayyaran yeah, Sheikh Wasim Every time somebody would take shahada, uh, the Prophet ﷺ would give him bay'ah, bay'ah, the pledge of allegiance. And uh, normally he would shake hand with the Prophet ﷺ and he would tell him what to do and so on. And sometimes the bay'ah would be collectively like, you know, bay'atul aqaba, al-ula, then the second. And then there is a particular bay'ah which is called bay'atul nisa. Uh, يعني what, what is the meaning of bay'atun nisa? So those who pledged allegiance, those who accepted Islam, or those even those who already accepted Islam, but if you like agreed to certain conditions, but now the situation had changed and further responsibilities were required of them beyond that, uh, that the Prophet ﷺ would uh, want to know that they are with him mm. and agree to everything so with the men mm. they would come at times the leader of the tribe would be sufficient to speak on behalf of his tribe shake his hand and that would be enough for every everyone and then other people like men for example would come and shake the Prophet Sallallahu hand and this is a pledge of allegiance however the Prophet ﷺ would not as he mentioned inni la usafihun nisa mm. that I would not and I do not shake the hands of, of women oh so when it comes to given the pledge of allegiance to women, it was verbally. Yeah. It wasn't the Prophet ﷺ never shook hand with a woman who's not his wife or his daughter or his, uh, you know, related to him, right? That's he right. said actually also a word of a woman is equal to the word hundred of one thousand women. Right. That's right. That's so right. he would sit before all of them and he would say, بَايِعْنَنِي عَلَىٰ أَن لَا تُشْرِكْنَ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَلَا تَسْرِقْنَ وَلَا تَزْنِينَ Great. My question actually, Sheikh Ibrahim, is on the day of the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet وسلم, his bay'ah was general, but why was it called bay'atun nisa? Uh, bay'atun nisa, the pledge of the women, it was something to show that the women, they have a bay'ah, they have a pledge separately. They were equally important. Equally important. And yeah. the Prophet وسلم, would address them specifically. 
uh, but moreover uh, it become a terminology that is called bay'atun mm. nisa uh, the bay'a of women even if only men are given the pledge mm. and this is in the case like in bay'atul aqaba uh, with the prophet sallam they were 12 men but they said that we were given bay'atun nisa referring to the verse when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the prophet sallam ya ayuhan nabi idha ja'aka al-mu'minat yubay'anaka 'ala alla yushrikna billahi shay'an wala yasrifna wala yazdin to the end of the verse mm. referring to specific orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the women to mention to give the pledge to them even though it's perfectly understood that they are included uh, right. you know among the bay'ah of men but no a special pledge of allegiance for women right. and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was establishing the concept that women and men are alike in the mind of people who lived in a civilization or a community where they used not to have that. Why are you talking about women and sitting and giving pledge of allegiance and being treated like, you know, decision makers? Yes, they are. So, إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُؤْمِنَاتُ يُبَايَعْنَكَ Then take and accept the pledge of allegiance from them. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُنَّ اللَّهِ and seek forgiveness yes. of Allah for them. Beautiful. Uh, and for the men to even say that it was been taken from us, bay'atul mm. nisa. The men would say that the bay'atul nisa, the women pledge, have been taken from us. Okay. Sheikh Muhammad, what do you say when, when somebody wants to give da'wah? Like, alhamdulillah, we travel the world. I believe all of us. So sometimes you feel like you know, you're in a situation where you want to shake hands with a woman, not because you want to, but because she is the host of a program, a TV program, or um, uh, in a conference, or um, an official person. What do you say and what do you do? Basically, uh, I would like to not restrict it to this particular uh, situation, because as Muslims, uh, we uh, abide uh, by the rules that have been set by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And also, I can say that even the queen don't shake hands with any normal people. So you personally, you do not compromise? <laughs> I don't compromise. But, but basically in certain cases, when it is Islam is being stereotyped, hmm. In, in this situation, some of the scholars said actually, uh, according to the interests of the Muslim community and according to the interests of looking at Islam, if people in the West, mm -hmm. they look at women or at you uh, or at Islam in general from that very particular uh, perspective, it needs uh, some type of what you cannot compromise. Well, what do you do, uh, Shafi? <laughs> Nowadays, yeah. COVID-19. So, uh, <laughs> oh, that's a smart answer. answer. <laughs> so I don't think anybody does it much anymore. You got us, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sheikh Ibrahim. Well, it's very easy to, uh, to just um, having the strength of Al Iman. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us, but it's very, we can add some blinds to it. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored me that the only one that I can touch is my wife. Yeah. I remember I said that to a, to a lady. Mm. She was a nurse, and she said, I, I wish my husband is like that. Wow. I mean, she, at first she got the shock, but then when she, they need to contemplate over it, and it's okay. Uh, they, you know, eventually, this is basically fits the fitrah of the human being, their nature, but it's been corrupted and been covered with many things, and it's our job to initiate these types of things in them, and it becomes a reason for them to go back to their pure nature. And you know what should strengthen you further? The fact that in the West, I'm free to do whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm not hurting you. I mean, when my wife was given birth, in the room next door, there was a woman who lost a lot of blood in an operation. And she was literally going to lose her life. And then they needed blood transfusion. But she said no. And her husband said no. They said she's going to die. He said, even though. Why not? Because she's following a particular denomination uh, where the denomination does not permit blood transfusion. So they rushed and they brought the sheet and said, sign here. Sign a release of the hospital. We offered you and you said, because of a religious commitment, I'm not going to accept the blood transfusion to my wife. And she would lose her life. And they respected that. So everywhere I go, 
I remember once I was giving a talk and the attendees were including the FBI, the chief judge, the head of the biggest bank, uh, no need to mention the names, the chief of the police, they were all the chieftains, <laughs> and the wives. And then after I gave the talk, they applauded the talk, they clapped, and there was a long few shaking hands. So when it comes to women, everyone with his missus, I put my hand on my chest, I acknowledge the fact that I only shake hands with men, and out of respect for these beautiful women, we do not touch. This is part of my religion. And alhamdulillah, it has been always met with respect. I mean, I did not once have an objection where some people said this is too extreme or this is fanatic. You know, keep in mind always that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you if you're sincere in your intention. Whosoever seeks the pleasure of Allah, even if that may offend people, the Almighty Allah promises, مَنْ طَلَبِ رِضَاءَ اللَّهِ بِسَخَطِ النَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَأَرْضَى عَنْهُ النَّاسِ So Allah will be pleased with him and will make people whom he was afraid that they will be displeased, he will make them pleased uh, with him as well. Ya Sheikh Wasim, you know I, why I chose uh, Sheikh Wasim because of the name obviously. <laughs> Rifq, gentleness, mm. kindness. The Prophet Sallallahu was the most gentle human being ever. And that's why when the Prophet Sallallahu was traveling in a caravan, you know the journeys are long, they travel for days and nights. So it, it gets very boring and that's why they would have those servants who would chant. And the rest of the people will be chanting in order to undermine the journey and the long way. So there was a person, a servant by the name Anjasha, and he has a very good voice. And whenever he would sing, the camels would speed up and would mm. rush. But these camels <laughs> carrying women. <laughs> so I think Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Anjasha, take it easy, rifqan bil qawarir. Take it easy on, not on the camels, on Al-Qawarir. Mm. Al-Qawarir, he was referring to the women who were riding on the back of the camels. Mm. What is the similarity between Qawarir mm. and women? Yeah, so, subhanAllah. So, it's quite a funny incident, uh, as you mentioned. So the Prophet والسلام, mentions to this individual to be fragile and be easy with these, uh, these fragile vessels, referring to the women. Mm. That you know, you're not the one who's sitting on maybe the camel in this. In, in Arabic, we, the Arab, mm. yeah. uh, we, we call the flasks, which yeah. is of the finest glass, yeah. where we put the perfume, yeah. very thin, very yeah. fine, very expensive, mm. qarura, a yeah. singular of qawarir. Yeah. Yeah. So the women at that time, they used to sit in these kind of little tents on the, it's like a hawdaj on top of the camel, and maybe yeah. you don't realize they're being sh you know, shaken from left to right and things like that. So he said to this, individual to not speed up too much so that you wouldn't cause any disturbance and maybe the oh woman my God, he's worried about their comfort yeah, exactly subhanallah subhanallah yeah. that's why subhanallah I had the comment here which refers to the uh, current affairs of women in the west mm. and we may actually uh, if we have time we can yeah. elaborate in it a little bit because subhanallah we have in the west right now we have the feminist uh, approach uh, and here, I just I, I think uh, this feminist movement and all its activities and writings, it came in a society which has troubles with regard to women, mm -hmm. and that's why, as as a response to the injustice and the violence being perpetrated against women, it is these anti uh, movements came, but it came in a way to or an attempt to obliterate or come uh, or terminate the natural innate of women, mm. the basic differences between men and women. In Islam, as we have mentioned, how the Prophet ﷺ, how the Prophet ﷺ looked at women. If we look at all of his ahadith, all of his actions, if we just, where in which line the Prophet ﷺ put women in his mind? It is in the hadith where he ﷺ said, إِنِّي أُحَرِّجُ حَقُّ الضَّعِيفَيْنِ mm. Al-Mar'ah, so the Prophet ﷺ put waliyati. Mm. So the Prophet ﷺ put women along with the orphan, in the sense of he looked at his culture, at his society, mm. that she was mistreated. Mm. So the Prophet ﷺ responded 
with more emphasis, with more, uh, uh, with more ahadith on recommending about the how to deal, how to be gentle with women. And I think this is the reason that women at the time of the Prophet it didn't have a problem in the society. No. It didn't have a problem. You know, Sheikh Muhammad, thank you so much and all of you really, uh, my dear brothers, for sharing this very blessed time with the viewers and with me personally. I've benefited a great deal, mashallah. And since we're drawing to, uh, towards the end of this episode, I just want to conclude by saying that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about who's the best of people, who's the best of mankind, he said, خيركم خيركم لأهله. The best of all of you is the one who is best to his wife. And then he remarked saying, وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي And indeed, I'm the best of all of you to his wives. So, if you remember the ayah which was started of the program with, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا. If you're serious about taking the messenger of Allah as your role model and your excellent pattern to follow, then be like him in treating his wives, his daughters, his sisters. He said, وأنا خيركم لأهلي and I'm the best of all of you towards my family. Thank you so much for sharing this blessed time with us. And you too, brothers and sisters, my dear viewers, thank you so much for sparing some time to learn about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how he treated women. To be continued, inshallah, next episode as well. Until then, I leave you all in the care of Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When his mission was just a start He held the hands of each companion I'm ashamed to play With little children With little children Amazing stories of someone who had morals Spoke gently Lifting compassion banners Never vacillated to say what's right. His conviction in Islam was eternally bright.